Hello, Ash of Master Reviews here, and well, let's get started. So, as much as I mostly focus on reviewing stuff, you know, in well, films and features, I do occasionally jump in to the net to streaming service stuff, and you know, especially when there's stuff that I, you know, kind of am excited to see, or if I'm just in the mood, you know. And these next two videos are actually reviews of Netflix movies that came out. I would say pretty much around the same time. I think I have to check that. But regardless, I, just, I, I at least saw them over around the same time, which was basically my little vacation, little holiday. Well, well, after I finished the, the 12 Christmas reviews from, from last year. So we're going to get started with the first one I saw, which is Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. So I guess we should start with the first movie, Knives Out. Um, I actually didn't see it till in theaters. In fact, I only really saw it actually last year in preparation for it. And from what I can say, I thought I think it's a good movie, but it is way too crazy at times for me. Like, like you get, you think you get there are too many red herrings, and it turns out the red herrings are actually the truth, and you know you kind of get confused. With the exception of one moment at the end, which I thought was handled pretty well for how they set it up. But uh, even though, again, I thought the acting was great. Even though, I will admit, it was a little bit hard to take Daniel Craig's American accent seriously in the first film. I'm just saying. I think a lot of people are like that. <laughs> even though you can tell he's having a good time with it. But um, with that said, um, to do a sequel for Knives Out uh, makes sense. It was a, a pretty good success critically, and, you know, I could see that. I was surprised to see a Netflix pick made this an exclusive with with a brief theatrical release before they released it on Netflix, which, you know, I probably might have seen it in theaters had I seen the first film earlier, but I never, but it just didn't fit for me. Although, with hearing that there's going to be a third film, maybe I will see that in theaters if they do a short release on Netflix, you never know. But, yeah, so going into this, is this an improvement for me? Honestly, it is. Honestly, I think they got it. Oh, it's a much better... I felt it is still crazy, but in my view, it's the right type of crazy. Plus, I think there's no reason why I've con I consider this a lot better of, you know, crazy films that came out last year, but we'll, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. But anyway, so the premise is a little bit different. The crime doesn't actually happen first. So... The film begins off with Ben, ben Ock Blanc, played in once again by Daniel Craig, um, being hired by a mysterious person to go to the island owned by billionaire in investor Miles Braun, played by Edward Norton. Norton, uh, Braun is a wealthy... Braun uh, has a group of friends that are equally in high places and rely on him for you know income as a bit of support. And every now and then he invites his um his friends to his extravagant island, and to participate in a murder mystery, in order you know just just for fun you know a getaway and especially since there's a sin in the COVID pan, the midst of the COVID pandemic in twenty twenty makes sense why they will do it and they go along with it. Though initially skeptical as to why Blanc's shown up on the island, he goes along with it thinking it's just a ruse. For Blanc, and Blanc doesn't even know who. It, and, well, yeah. the thing is, Blanc technically knows what's, who hired him, even though, you know, he's not laying on. We're not going to get to that. Sorry. It was spoiled, but anyway. Also among the islands is, is, is Miles Braun's former secretary. And I think, um, I forget her name, but, yeah. She hasn't been in contact since with, with, Blanc, with Braun and the rest of the, of the, um, the shitheads they call it. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> all this, um, all the t this group of people, in in a very long time, because of uh, she was against Brian investing in, in a um, in a very dangerous energy source. So now she's showing up on the island, causing you know, well, controversy and stirring up trouble. You know, causing arguments. You know, but little do we know what her secret motivation is. As well as what's really going on when an actual murder takes place, and and Blanc, 
was to manage the chaos of his, of his people on these island, on this island, to sell those. To, you know, basically sell it. Say what's going to happen. It is, once again, as I'm trying... It sounds like I'm explaining this very complicated. And I'm not really the best at describing mystery, murder mystery films. Unless I can really go easy on it. But, with that said, I kind of like how this film is, is paced better. I mean, I like the first one enough, but I don't know. I feel like Ryan Johnson did a much better job here when, especially when we get to the middle and the main twist happens. That got got me fully involved and in, fully appreciating this movie more. I love the, the the massive reveal in the middle of the film. It's just it it's better. It's different from the original, and I like it. You know, it just <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Even though you can kind of hit, guess what's going to happen, it's more a bit of a as to who on the island actually did send the block the invitation. It's not exactly what you think. It's more it's a, a massive surprise when you actually find out who actually is responsible for bringing Blanc to Miles Bronze Island. I love the acting, and I thought all the actors are great. Um, and it's and Craig in particular, I really dug, dug his um, American accent more on this, honestly. I, I thought it was much better than the first film. I think I think maybe it's because I also watched Knives Out, um, the first film, the day before I went to I watched this on that uh, Glass Onion on Netflix. So I had a bit more warm-up to, you know, get myself prepared again. So, yeah. Maybe that's a recommendation that you have to see the first film and then watch the set, this film. Just to get a bit more comfortable, comfortable with with Daniel Craig's accent, it's a suggestion at the very least. I think the script is great. I think the music is handled pretty well. I love the, I I love, a lot of the things in this. I think, the clues as to how they, as to who's the main you know, chess player. I should basically say in this, it um uh, you know much better than the first film in my view. I I love the setting and placement with this. I think it works out well. As I said, I love the twist in the middle. And I think the one thing that... And the most important thing for me that I actually like about this film a lot more than the first is I can, talk, I can manage the craziness of it a lot better than the first film. I mean, and to be fair, I think part of the reason why I tolerate this crazy a lot more Maybe because I experienced the absolute insanity that was Don't Worry Darling with that ending. And well, come, I'm not going to keep bagging on about Don't Worry Darling's end. I've done it, but don't so many times already on this on this cha channel since I've seen that movie. But this crazy is much easier to handle than the f than Don't Worry Darling's. <laughs> Jeez, I I promise I'm not going to keep on you know. Don't want to have all of my reviews with them back in that film. You know, you just, you just got to go through it. But, um, if I have to give one little bit of, um, a little slight nitpick, it's, it's more so, it's just one little bit of repeat when you get to the main reveal of who's the villain. I am, once you figure, once you see what he what the guy, the, the character does. It's sort of a repeat of what exactly happens a bit with um, the reveal in, in the first film. However, I don't think it was handled as well as the first film, uh, to be fair. I mean, repeats can work, but it's got to have a... But at times it can fail and or can go down a notch and this this did i'm just saying when when a certain piece of evidence is destroyed and it seems like the case is lost look yes there is a a, a little bit of a reveal with what happened with with a bit of advice blanc gives his uh, client i'm not sure if i liked it more than the first film even then, I will admit how Blanc figured out um, everything advanced in the first time. I just wish he had revealed that in the first place. Jeez, that, that blood drop was pretty obvious, but, you know. I'm not going to go out. Well, no. 
in, in total, I really enjoyed Glass Onion. I thought it was a great film. I, in fact, I've actually watched it a few more times since I first saw it, probably, if I'm correct, uh, October, yeah, October, uh, no, 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 October, December 27th. Yeah, I, I watched it on December 27th, so just two days after Christmas. <laughs> but yeah, I, I had a good time with Glass Onion. It was great. I give us a 9 out of 10 half stars. Love every moment of it. Definitely go see it. Definitely watch it on Netflix, without a, without a doubt. But as I said, watch the first movie before you watch this, just so you can get prepared with Daniel Craig's accent. It helps. You know, unless you're okay with it from the very beginning, so, yeah. So what's next? Um, my next Netflix film review is something that I think I've been wanting to, to touch, that will, well, pretty much became a phenomenon once it was released. With many people considering one of the best films of the year. And considering that there were three or two other films based on this story released last year, it's pretty surprise it's pretty, you know, obvious how much it could have been, you know, it's pretty obvious that, that this one's considered favourites, even though the competition is very mixed. Look, I haven't seen the the, the Russian import, but I saw the Disney remake. <laughs> We'll, we'll get to that, but I promise next time we'll review Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, and then I'm going to do something video game related, where I revisit some of my old reviews, but look at their DLC campaigns, but we'll get to that, we'll get to that. The next review will be Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. So in the meantime, this is Hazard from Hazard Reads Out, and I shall see you for my next video. Ciao!